In this video, I'm going to walk you through a singular value decomposition step by step using Wolfram to do our calculations. So if we have a matrix like this, remember that the singular value decomposition works for any matrix. It doesn't have to be a square matrix. It doesn't have to be an invertible matrix. It doesn't have to be diagonalizable. Any matrix at all can be decomposed into U times sigma times V transpose. So we'll just work through an example here. I'll try to show you all the different things that can happen. And uh, feel free to pause and replay different pieces of the video. You'll also see Wolfram code in here where you'll see exactly how to do these calculations using uh, uh, Wolfram. So our first step is going to be to orthogonally diagonalize A transpose A. We've talked about how that matrix A transpose A is symmetric and is therefore orthogonally diagonalizable. That means that it's diagonalizable and we can find the full basis of eigenvectors for our full space Rn that consists entirely of eigenvectors that are orthogonal to each other and are all also unit vectors, a so-called orthonormal basis for Rn. So the way that we're going to do that is by using the eigensystem command. That's going to give us a list of eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated with those eigenvalues. But those eigenvectors that we get will not necessarily be unit vectors, and they won't necessarily be orthogonal to each other. So the way that we're going to fix those eigenvectors is either by normalizing them. So normalize just takes a vector and either shrinks it down or expands it out to be a unit vector. That's what we're going to do if we only have one eigenvector associated with a given eigenvalue. But if we have multiple eigenvectors associated with a given eigenvalue, we need to not only make them be unit vectors, but we need to make them be orthogonal to each other. And so for that, we're going to use the orthogonalize command, which does the Gram-Schmidt process to make those vectors be orthogonal. So here's what this is going to look like for our matrix A. So the first thing that I'm doing here is just typing in the matrix A. The next thing I'm doing is defining the matrix transpose, A transpose times A, which I just call ATA, because again, this just is, looks like A transpose A. So just to have an abbreviation for it, I just like to call that ATA. And then we find an eigensystem for our matrix A transpose A. So what we're seeing here is that we've got four eigenvalues where we count zero twice, right? So it's a four by four matrix. A was five by four, five rows and four columns. So A transpose A is going to be four by four, as we see here, right? This is a four by four matrix. So that four by four matrix is going to have four eigenvalues counting multiplicity. And so this eigenvector goes with 28. So if this is lambda one, which is 28, lambda two, which is 10, and this is lambda three equals lambda four equals zero, this eigenvector goes with lambda one, this eigenvector goes with lambda two, and these two eigenvectors both go with lambda three, which is the same as lambda four. So now we're going to apply the normalize and orthogonalize commands. So for our first vector, our eigenvalue 28 just had one associated eigenvector, so we just normalize it. So this vector gets shrunk down to be a unit vector. Same thing with V2, right? So that vector corresponded to our second eigenvalue, lambda two equals 10. And so again, we just have to normalize it. For our third and fourth eigenvalues, which are both zero, we don't know just offhand, it does turn out to be true in this case, but in general, the eigenvectors that we get don't have to be orthogonal to each other. So the way that we can just always apply the orthogonalized command to apply the Gram-Schmidt process and make them be orthogonal. So these four vectors are going to be the columns of my matrix V. So these four are the columns of my matrix capital V that I'm trying to build. And so the way that I do that in Wolfram, if I just type in V1, V2, V3, V4, if I just type that in, this is the matrix whose rows are these vectors V1, V2, V3, and V4. So I'm going to apply the transpose command to change that into the matrix whose columns are V1, V2, V3, and V4. So that's why you're seeing that transpose command in there. Okay, so step two is to actually build these matrices capital V and sigma. We've already built capital V, you just saw that on the previous slide. Now what's sigma? So sigma is the matrix that has the same size as the original matrix A. So remember A is five by four. So sigma is five by four, the exact same size. And so what sigma is gonna look like is it's going to be mostly zeros. So the, the way that sigma looks is gonna be mostly zeros but the diagonal entries of sigma are going to be the square roots of my eigenvalues. So remember that we had lambda one was 28. So sigma one is the square root of 28. That's my first singular value. So my upper left-hand corner entry here is the square root of 28. Lambda two, my second eigenvalue was 10. And so sigma two is going to be the square root of 10. 
And so I go down and to the right, and I get a square root of 10. Lambda 3 and lambda 4 were both 0. And so that means that sigma 3 and sigma 4 are both 0. So I get a 0 and a 0. And then everything else in this matrix sigma is a big old 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's my matrix sigma. Now, if you run out of room in sigma, right, so if you have more singular values than you have rows in your matrix sigma, then you end up throwing out some of your singular values. But as it turns out, the only ones you'll ever throw out are zeros. So you're not really losing any information. And again, here's how we would type that into the Wolfram. We already had capital V from the previous slide. And here's me just typing in sigma by hand. All right, so the third and hardest step here is to construct the matrix U. Now, for some of our singular values, the non-zero singular values, we have a formula. So all we're going to do is plug into our formula. Remember that we had sigma 1 was the square root of lambda 1, which was the square root of 28, and sigma 2 was the square root of lambda 2, which was the square root of 10. So all I'm doing here is typing those into my formulas, and I get two vectors, u1 and u2. Now, a is 5 by 4. So the matrix U has to be five by five, right? So the way that this is gonna work is A is U sigma V transpose. A was five by four. Sigma is the same size as A. So sigma is also five by four. V and U are both square matrices, which means V has to be four by four and U has to be five by five. And so far we only have two U vectors. We're gonna need a total of five U vectors. And so that means that we have to take those two vectors that we've already found and extend them to a full orthonormal basis for R5. So the way we're going to do this is by setting up a matrix, which I'm going to call capital C, whose columns are the U vectors that we've already found. So, so far we found two vectors, U1 and U2. So capital C is going to be the matrix whose columns are U1 and U2. And then we're going to take that matrix and flip it around, find, form the transpose. So C transpose is going to be the matrix that has two rows, U1 going across the first row and U2 going across the second row. This is how I enter that in Wolfram. So if I put curly brackets and just start listing vectors, those vectors get written as the rows. So those are my two vectors. And now I'm looking for an orthonormal basis for the null space of C transpose. So I'm going to row reduce C transpose. That's going to give me 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 0, 1, 2 thirds, 1 third. Remember, we're trying to find a null space, which means I need to interpret this as two equations, x1 equals negative 2 x2. x2 is going to be a free variable, right? So I'm solving the equation c transpose times x equals 0. That's how I find a null space. x3, getting back to the second row, x3 is going to be negative 2 thirds x4 minus 1 third x5. And then x4 and x5 are both free. Since I need a basis for this null space, I need to write this solution in parametric form. So here's what that parametric form looks like. I get three vectors, and those three vectors form a basis for the null space of C transpose, but it's not generally going to be an orthonormal basis. Again, the problem needs to be that these three vectors have to be all unit vectors, which they're clearly not, and they all have to be orthogonal to each other, which is also not true. So the way that we fix both of those problems is by using the Gram-Schmidt process again, using uh, the orthogonalized command in Wolfram. And here's what that looks like. So we type in our three vectors. So this, this, and this, those are my three vectors from my parametric solution on the previous slide. I orthogonalize that. And so the resulting vectors are, first of all, orthogonal to the vectors that I already found. These are orthogonal to u1 and u2 by the way that I constructed it. And they're all orthogonal to each other and they're all unit vectors. So this matrix capital U whose columns are u1 through u5, that's going to be a full orthogonal basis for R5. And now we've done everything, right? So we've constructed our matrix u, we've constructed sigma, we've constructed v. So the only thing that's left to do is to multiply all this stuff together, u times sigma times v transpose, and make sure that we do, in fact, get back to our original matrix, which we do. All right, so a quick recap of all this stuff. Again, feel free to rewind the video and look at some of the steps that you might have missed. The first step is to find an orthogonal diagonalization of A transpose A. We use the eigensystem command to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then we either normalize or orthogonalize the eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. Those vectors that we get form the columns of the matrix capital V. The matrix sigma 
has the same size as A, and its diagonal entries are the square roots of the eigenvalues that you found in step one. Then the third and hardest step is to construct the matrix capital U. We have a formula which we can use as long as our sigma values are non-zero. But as soon as we run out of non-zero sigma values, we'll have to construct the matrix capital C and find that orthonormal basis for the null space of C transpose. We don't always have to do that last part of step three. It's only something that we have to do if we don't have enough non-zero singular values. So that's the process. Hopefully this example makes sense that you can follow along and work on these problems on your own.